Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy November 1st. Um, it is a lot going on, and I wanted to come on here and talk about it uh, with you guys. Um, as we all know, yesterday was Halloween. I did my live stream yesterday, and it was just interesting because I was telling everybody, please be careful. Please understand that the veil is the thinnest between October 31st and November 1st. Um, October 31st is a very spiritual day for the occult. And then November 1st is a you know considered the day of the dead in a lot of Hispanic cultures, especially in Mexico. And um, I finally went to bed yesterday, it took me a while to fall asleep, um, so I probably fell asleep about 1 o'clock in the morning, and then all of a sudden, my phone is ringing at 4 a.m., and I wake up, and it's somebody on the other line, and they're telling me, there's been a shooting, there's been a shooting, and takeoff got killed, and I was just like, are you serious? They're like, yes. Um, they didn't know all of the details, but they said they had confirmed, um, they were told, they seen pictures of the body. And things like that. So at that point, I couldn't sleep. I just, you know, jumped online. And I had seen, like, I think Hollywood Unlock or somebody had just posted it as well. Um, it was it was just crazy. And then so I went on to post. And I'm still half asleep, so I totally misspelled Texas. But I was half asleep when I was posting and just trying to gather information. And then I ended up falling back asleep. And um, I woke up and my phone was just blowing up with people calling and texting and trying to figure out, was it true or not? Um, it's very true, you know, so my heart definitely goes out to um, their entire family, Takeoff, Quavo, Offset, just everybody involved. Um, Takeoff was very much loved, a lot of people. You know, he was the chill one in the group. And it's funny because I remember when I first started getting into Migos, I used to always call him Blast Off. <laughs> People was like, it's not Blast Off, it's Takeoff. And I'm like, it's some type of rocket type name. <laughs> but over the years, you know, to know him is to love him and the fact that he was just really cool, just very laid back. And even though the group wasn't together, you could see that they had visions for the future and they wanted bigger things and they were still going to move forward and drop their own music. And, you know, their new album was definitely taking off um a week ago they had did an interview with the drink champs which i found very ironic um during that interview takeoff was basically saying that you know he wants his flowers don't give me my flowers when i'm dead and gone i want my flowers i want people to understand that i made a mark in you know the music industry he definitely changed the cadence he definitely changed the flow the style you saw a lot of mainstream artists start rapping like the migos now one thing i really really love about the project is how you shine it, like, like it. I, I feel like I feel like I feel like not not like of course you were shining before, but I feel like you were dancing on this one. Yeah, I felt like you he was just crazy. like yo. I felt like it was just like like it was always your time. It was your time to prove it. Is that something you had in your mind when you was going in recording? Oh, for sure. Okay, you know what I mean uh, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm chill. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. laid back, but mm -hmm. it's time to pop it. You know what I mean, I mean, it's time to give me my flowers. You know what I mean. Right. I don't yes. want them later on when I ain't here. God damn it! You know what I mean, for I want sure. them right God now. Damn. So, God damn yeah. so yeah, he definitely put in work. But as I'm looking further into this, I'm seeing a lot of symbolism, um, and this is not to be conspiratorial, you know, but I, I had to look at things deeper. It's hard for me to look at things from a surface level, but, um, there's a lot of things that's kind of creeping me out with this whole situation and everything that takeoff has gone through. Um, so let me just kind of give you guys a backstory. Takeoff's real name is Kernick Kahari Ball. And basically they were saying that a fight broke out over a dice game at a private party at 810 Billard and Bowling in downtown Houston. He was 28 years old. Um, they're saying that what happened is that he was shot at 2.30 in the morning. The police arrived on the scene around 2.40 a.m. And people were telling the police that they heard gunfire on the balcony. 
There were people literally everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and also play you guys this news clip, so I want you guys to watch this as well. But first, I do want to take you back to some breaking news and an update that has just come in to our newsroom. A representative does confirm that rapper Takeoff has died in a shooting outside of a Houston bowling alley. Takeoff, who was part of Migos along with Quavo and Offset, was 28 years old. Houston police say officers responded shortly after 2.30 a.m. local time to reports of a shooting at 810 Billiards and Bowling. We're told that dozens of people had gathered on a balcony outside the bowling alley at the time, which was on the third floor of that building. For breaking news, one of the members of the incredibly popular rap group Migos was shot and killed in Houston. Representatives for the group have confirmed the rapper known as Takeoff has died following this morning's shooting in Houston. The rapper's real name was Kershnik Kari Ball. He was 28 years old. His group, Migos, first formed in Atlanta in 2008. And by 2013, the trio hit it big with the single Versace. Drake actually was featured on the song and it blew up. They've gone on to produce 20 platinum and gold singles and albums. Houston police say the shooting happened early this morning during a private party at a bowling alley. TMZ and Variety are reporting Takeoff was playing dice outside on the balcony when a fight broke out, ending in a shooting. Uh, there were some security guards that were in the area, but they heard the shooting, but no one saw who did the shooting. Um, a lot of folks were there. They were in front of the bar. The bar was actually closed at the time. They had the doors locked, but people were congregating out on the balcony area, and everybody fled. Takeoff died there at the bowling alley. Two others were hurt and taken to the hospital in private cars. Another member of the group, Quavo, he was there at the party. He wasn't hurt. Police haven't arrested anyone and are now reviewing security video from the bowling alley. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit about Takeoff and his career, right? So Migos is a rap trio. It's Takeoff, Quavo, and Offset. But just weeks ago, Quavo and Takeoff kind of branched out, releasing their first album as a duo called Unk and Few. It's been getting a lot of positive reactions, specifically for how Takeoff shined on the record in a way he hasn't always been recognized for. Obviously, Qua Quavo is incredibly famous. Offset married to Cardi B. His career has kind of blown up, and people weren't giving maybe Takeoff the recognition he deserved. And that changed just days ago. It's so sad to me hearing him say, you know, I don't want my flowers later on when I'm not here, not knowing that just days later, mm -hmm. you know, we'd be reporting this awful news. I think um, it, that was it, Noriega actually was there in a bit kind of saying, you know, you shine. He's like, you know, you always shine. He's a rap fan, but it felt like you were dancing on this album. And he asked him if he felt like he had something to prove. Right. And he said, absolutely. Like he was tired of people putting him in the shadows. Do you right, know what I mean? Right, like right, not right. recognizing not his talent. Yeah, yeah, and he got the yeah. chance to do this. The saddest part about this is these guys are our family, actually. Like Quavo and Offset are cousins. And take off as Quavo's, Quavo's nephew. That's what I was about to ask mm -hmm. you. That's what I'd read before. Yeah, and I didn't few, know uncle right. and nephew. Yeah. Oh, okay. So to think Got his it. uncle was there. Right. These kids are all around the same age. Not kids. These are grown men, but they're right. young. You know, they're right. 28, 30, 31, and they all grew up together as brothers. Mm -hmm. And to think that yeah. Quavo was there and had to watch this happen, it's horrifying. It's mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah. Terrible. I'm and sad for them. And we're still getting more information, but over dice, a game of who, dice. You know, who knows? Who That's knows? what TMZ I is know. reporting. But I think the saddest thing is that a 28-year-old lost his life. I'm here with Commander Steven Spears, who's also with the Homicide Division. Uh, we're just giving a brief update on the investigation that occurred here at uh, 1201 San Jacinto. At approximately 2.30 this morning, uh, our officers were dispatched out here to a shooting that had just occurred. Uh, upon arrival, they located multiple shell casings on the third level of the building at the 810 Bowling and Billiards. Um, I guess it's a, a bowling and pool hall. Uh, we were informed that there was a um, private party being held at the event last night that ended at approximately 1 a.m., but the party carried over till about 2 a.m. till they were cleared out. That's when the shooting occurred, where it left one male deceased on scene uh, and two others that were transported to area hospitals nearby. Uh, we are still in the process in the early stages of, the, of this investigation. Uh, trying to gather all the information we can and we're looking for the public's help or anybody who was at the party or at the event that witnessed this to call the Homicide Division at 713-308-3600. If they want to remain anonymous, they can call Crime Stoppers at 713-222-TIPS. We're looking for any information. Uh, 
on the shooting at this time? Unit conditions at the two people at the hospital. We have investigators and officers heading that way now. Uh, we do not know. We know they're still alive and in surgery, but uh, other than that, don't know the actual condition until we get there. Um, like I said, the one that is here is deceased. He's a black male in his late 20s. Um, and like I said, we won't release any information on him until we're able to get more information either from the medical examiner's office once they uh, positively identify him from the uh, autopsy or if a family member or friends or family come forward and give us information uh, of who he is and things like that. We're hearing rappers were involved in the shooting. Can you at least confirm that? Uh, I mean, I can't confirm that. Uh, I can tell you that there are rappers at the party. I don't know if they're involved in the shooting. But uh, like I said, it's still in the early process of the investigation. So once we find out more, we'll release that in either a press statement to y'all later on, uh, or we'll give you a, uh, another press conference. So you haven't identified if the rappers are amigos. We were told by several witnesses who attended the party they were here at the bowling alley. Yes, we were informed that they were here. The yes. amigos, Quavo and Takeoff? Uh, yes. Sorry, uh, is there any uh, surveillance cameras up there that y'all probably will be looking at uh, uh, during the daytime? Uh, they do have surveillance video cameras here in the, uh, the complex. Uh, our investigators have reviewed the cameras and are still in the process of reviewing them. Uh, so once they're finished doing that, we'll have more information, like I said, later on. Like I said, still early in the process. And uh, once we get all that information, we will provide it to you. Well, right now, anybody who knows anything, they need to call us instead of the news stations because um, it appears that they're calling y'all and not us. So if you do have information on this, please come forward. Call us at, like I said, the two numbers, the Homicide Division or Crime Stoppers. Uh, we'll take all information, interview you in person or over the phone. But yes, please come out um, because if this does turn out to be a high, pro high profile case, we want to make sure that uh, justice is found for uh, the people involved, not just the person who is shot, but uh, everyone else who's at the hospital right now. Do we have any more information about the two that are in the hospital, male or female, general ages, anything like that? Uh, I don't at this time. There's to both hospitals. Uh, we found out about them late. They were private transport. Um, so it got called in as a separate call from this. They weren't transported from the location. They took themselves to the hospital. So it took a little time for us to connect their case with this case. And just to be clear, we understand and we know it. Last this morning at about approximately 2.34 a.m., officers received a call of a shooting in progress. Officers arrived there shortly thereafter. The location is in the downtown location billiards uh, bowling alley located at 1201 San Jacinto Street uh, here in the downtown area. Once officers arrived, uh, they came up on a, a male who was deceased. Uh, that male has been identified as Kersnick Ball, uh, better known as Takeoff. And he's a, a member of the Migos uh, rap group out of Atlanta. And I want to pause again because sometimes the hip hop community gets a bad name. And I know and evident from this city and people who I have a personal relationship, a lot of great people in our hip hop community and I respect them. But back to take off. I got many calls from Houston and outside of Houston and everyone spoke of what a great young man this is, how peaceful he is. What a great artist. And I'm calling up on everybody. Our hip hop artists in Houston and around the nation. We got to police ourselves. It is so many talented individuals, men and women in that community, who again, I love and I respect. And we all need to stand together and make sure nobody tears down that industry. And I'm calling to start here in Houston, uh, here and possibly as early as next week. I want to meet with some of our artists and see how we can taper things down. Um, right now, I'm going to turn it over to um, the investigator, and, and we'll, we'll uh, our commander translate, and uh, the mayor is here for questions as, as well. But I want to pray for, uh, ask that we all pray for his mother his family, 
and all of his friends who are in deep pain and shock still right now. Um, thank you. Investigator, come on up. Thank you. thank you again, Chief, and thank you all for coming here, um, and good afternoon. I'm Sergeant uh, Michael Arrington. I'm a sergeant with the Houston Police Department's Homicide Division. And um, earlier this morning, uh, as he said, our patrol officers received a call at approximately 2.34 a.m. of a shooting just occurred at the 810 Billiard Factory and, I'm sorry, Billiard and um, uh, Bowling Alley. From there, we were notified that there was a single male who was shot and pronounced deceased on the scene on the third level outside, just outside the front door. Um, we were also informed that two other individuals um, had reported themselves by personal uh, vehicle to area local area hospitals uh, on their own, both of them with non-life-threatening injuries, but a 23-year-old male and a 24-year-old female. Um, like I said, both of them are going to be okay, um, and we have spoken and gotten information from them to help us in this investigation. But the officers arriving on the scene, initial statements from employees working at the uh, establishment notified us that there was an incident that occurred after the party had ended. There was a private uh, party that was booked out for the uh, event. And then after that ended, uh, there was a large group of people who gathered at the front door area just outside of the uh, building. And uh, it led to an argument where the shooting took place uh, from the disagreement. A lot of the people that were there fled the scene um, and did not stick around to give a statement. So we're asking them to either call us at the Homicide Division at 713-308-3600, uh, or if they would like to remain anonymous, they can call Crime Stoppers at 713-222-TIPS. We're looking for any information at this time, any videos, uh, any, any information. Uh, we do know that the media has received a lot of phone calls, uh, text messages, Twitter, tweets, vines, videos. Um, we need all of y'all to send those to us so we can solve this case. Um, we're looking for anything to help us. From there, um, as the chief said, we want to find justice for this family. Uh, they're going through a lot right now. And uh, the only thing that we can do is hope that y'all reach out and assist us in any way to lead to evidence that will help us to apprehend and get charges and arrest on the person responsible for the death of takeoff. Thank you. Let me say something right quick, just a follow-up. Um, I just want to say something to uh, our city, Houston, and every brother and sister in the neighborhoods I'm calling you to action, to step up. There were 40 people at least at, at, at this event, and people left possibly out of fear. But I ask you one thing, and I want this to res resonate with everybody. What if it was your brother? What if it was your son? You would want somebody to step up. So please step up, get the information to us so we can bring some closure um, to this family who's hurting uh, right now. All right, so you guys just watched that news clip. Um, and, of course, on Twitter, there's pictures of his body, unfortunately. Um, there's pictures of people kind of further away. There's a further shot. And then I happen to go on Twitter later on today, and there's a picture of a close-up shot. And there's clearly no saving him. I mean, there's, you know, blood and brain matter um, everywhere, and Quavo's trying to move him, and, you know, he finally kind of just – lets him go because there's nothing he can do and you can see Quavo's going through it. Um, very, very just heartbreaking. Um, and I get people like Gilly getting upset, like, you know, why are people filming this and putting this on the internet? Um, it happens with every rapper's death. It happens with any celebrity death, unfortunately. People are going to be just people. But I also look at it like hopefully, you know, it, it wakes people up to see like this is reality. This is not a movie. He's not getting up. The makeup is not going to be washed off. This is reality. This is what happens when you take somebody's life. You know, this is the horror. I think we've been so desensitized where, you know, we don't know if we're in reality or if we're on the Internet. But this is the reality of the situation. 
I'm more upset at the people who took his life than even the the vultures who were recording, you know. But all that aside, um, when I went onto his Instagram page, I noticed he had posted his final post, which was posted about maybe 10 hours ago now. He was posting a picture of him in front of the bowling alley in his outfit. And the music that's playing in the background is called Stop Breathing. And that's a song by Playboy Cardi. So I always talk about words having power and spells. And it was just very interesting that the last thing he posted was a song called Stop Breathing. And he's no longer breathing. On top of that, they had also released their music video that same day, which was on October 31st on Halloween. And that video is called Messy. Okay. So I watched that video a few times and I noticed a few things that were really weird to me. In the video, there's a scene where Quavo is sitting on the bed and he's next to a contract and it says Migos on there, right? And there's also a gun. And I thought that was very interesting that there's a gun there and there's a contract and it looks like he's being forced to make some type of decision. He's contemplating something and then finally he just picks the gun. Then the scene scans over and we see Takeoff and Takeoff is standing right next to a Grim Reaper sign and it says R.I.P. That sent me chills because like I said, I don't miss a lot. I'm a very visual person. So when I'm watching this and then I'm seeing him standing next to that, I went back and I rewound it and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. I don't know if you guys noticed when watching the video, Quavo's outfit has a bunch of outstretched hands. It's the thumbnail of the video. Another thing that's really creepy is if you look closely at Quavo's outfit in the bed, he has on pants and on those pants, those are outstretched hands all over his pants. And when he's in the bed, he has on a white t-shirt. But then when he meets back up with takeoff and they're walking in the hallway, he has on a full jacket and the jacket has a bunch of hands on them. And these aren't like hand prints. They're not praying hands. These are like creepy hands, like hands that are ghoulish. They're cut at the wrist. And it's almost like these hands are crying out for help. That's kind of the last image that you see when you think about scary movies or somebody drowning in the water or, you know, reaching out for help. It's like that hand, that last gesture, that fear, you know, them wanting to be saved. And he has this printed all over his shirt and his pants. I try to look up the designer. I'm assuming it's Alexander McQueen, but I might be wrong. Um, but I try to look up who made this design, but it's very telling you know, like these are outstretched, creepy hands. You know, is that something possibly foreshadowing that, you know, this shooting was going to happen and that might have been the last thing that takeoff would do is, you know, kind of outstretch his hand looking for help. I don't know, but I just thought it was very eerie that he was wearing this shirt. And if you Google, you know, creepy hands or reaching for help, they look just like the hands that are on Quavo's entire outfit from head to toe. So that was another thing I saw in the video. On top of that, in the video, there's also a scene of people fighting over a card game where things are escalating and they're getting upset and they're about to fight. And I thought that was very interesting because the initial reports came out that this was supposedly behind a dice game that Quavo was upset he was losing and then words were exchanged and guns were pulled out. But now there's another female that's come out and she's saying that it wasn't necessarily over a dice game because somebody was teasing Quavo and he kind of got in his feelings. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what this girl wrote. It's going viral right now on social media. So the girl, because it's Halloween, she's in a Girl Scouts uniform. So she says this. I'm going to speak on this because I feel like I got to. I was right next to Takeoff, and they wasn't arguing about shooting dice. Quavo was pressed, and Takeoff was hit by a straight bullet by a straight bullet for no reason. RIP Takeoff. He didn't deserve that. He was to himself the whole night. And you can see the final picture of Takeoff. It is on social media. She also posted it. And you can see his hair. You can see the outfit that he posted earlier. You can see his hair is really long. So we know that it's takeoff. And right next to takeoff is the girl in the Girl Scouts uniform outfit. So she was right next to him when he, you know, when everything happened. Um, you know, by the grace of God, no stray bullets hit her as well because she could have been vulnerable, you know, just standing next to him. Uh, she goes on to say this. I didn't come on here for clout. I'm sad that I watched somebody who was out the mix the whole time get killed on accident. They weren't arguing about dice. Takeoff wasn't even shooting with them. 
Then she goes on to say, they wasn't arguing inside. It started five minutes after we got outside. We was finna go to the strip club and the argument started off as a joke and then escalated. Everybody was outside taking pictures. Somebody says, what was the joke? She replies back and she says, I guess Quavo being in the ring and a dude made a joke about fighting him and he got offended. So she's saying that it was a conversation that led into this. So Basically, it seems like it was some ego type stuff. Either way, you know, regardless if it's a dice game or them arguing about fighting, it's still really, really sad how this went down. Another thing that's, you know, that's kind of disturbing too. you know, one of the popular slogans that come from Texas, um, we know NASA's down there. And one of the slogans that, you know, they've always said for years is Houston, we have a problem. Another slogan that comes from NASA is Houston, we're ready for takeoff. Um... And Takeoff even had an album, and it was called The Last Rocket. And that was released on November 2nd, 2018. It's going to be literally four years to the date tomorrow on November 2nd when he put out that album called The Last Rocket. Another thing that was very interesting as well on top of that is that Quavo and Takeoff also had a song called 2.30 on their latest album. And what's very interesting is that Takeoff was also killed at 2.30 in the morning. Now, their latest album is called Only Built for Infinity Links. Now, it's the latest collaboration between Quavo and Takeoff. Um, You know, they all kind of dropped their own separate albums. So now they decide to come back together. And so this was the latest album and he had been, you know, promoting it. And one thing that I found very interesting is that um, they were using the same logo as Meta, the whole, you know, the number eight logo, the infinity link, you know, you're just always in an infinite, you know, type circle. They were using the same logo on social media. And I remember back when Meta, when Facebook changed to Meta, and it caused a lot of controversy because a lot of people weren't really liking that name or the logo. And the meaning of Meta in Hebrew meant dead. You know, like your base. And so a lot of people are deeply into that. Like, does that mean that you're leaving your physical body and then your body is going to be transported into the metaverse? You know, the world of the dead. Like, this is just really weird. But I remember that caused a lot of controversy. So it's very interesting that on this new album, Only Built for Infinity Links, that they're using the same logo as well. So there's a lot, you know, that's going on here with this situation. It's a lot to digest. There's still a lot of information out there. So please understand, I didn't make this video to accuse anybody of anything, to make it feel like, you know, Quavo's behind anything. That's not why I made this video. I just look at stuff, you know, esoterically. So sorry if you guys can't get with that. Like I always tell you guys that Bible verse that says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers and against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So I'm showing you all this stuff in these videos to show you all that there's certain messaging, there's certain codings and there's certain things that happen. You know, what I'm saying that we may never be able to fully understand or grasp, but there is definitely something spiritual going on in the air. There is a lot of things going on right now in the environment, um, good and bad. You know, and this whole situation is very sad. Again, I didn't make this video to, you know, blast anybody or throw anybody under the bus. That's not, you know, why I made this video. But I want you guys to see, you know, just some of the spiritual aspects and how sometimes, you know, you can bring things to fruition through imagery, through words that we speak. And I just found all these connections just really, really crazy. So I had to make a video about it. But with that being said, I wish everybody the best in this situation. Rest in peace to take off. My condolences to his family. My condolences to Quavo Offset. At the end of the day, this is a family, you know, divided and broken. And I just pray that, you know, the only shining light with this death is that this death brings everyone back together and they realize how short and how precious life is. And I also hope that it, you know, eventually just wakes up hip hop because we have to start asking ourselves, why is this always happening in hip hop? We don't get these, you know, every three month murders in pop, in rock and roll, in country. It's something with the energy and the vibration that's going on in hip hop that we're dealing with so many dead rappers, like literally 
one rapper after another after another. And it's just really, really heartbreaking because these rappers are not even making it to old age like the rock and roll stars. I mean, yeah, we have our Jay-Z's and Nas's, but what about the, the kids that are growing up with our children's generation? They're not even making it to 30. You know, so it's just really sad that this young man lost his life and for nothing. He was literally just sitting there, not engaged in anything, not playing dice, not a part of the argument or the fight, and he lost his life. And this is why, again, I always tell people that you have to look at the people that you surround yourself with because you may not be involved in anything. You might be the chill one out the group, but sometimes other people's actions, and I'm not blaming anybody because we don't know the full story, right? But sometimes other people's actions can lead to innocent people's demise. So I think you know people may have to take a look at their friend group. And if you have a friend that's volatile, that's quick to anger, that's quick to pop off, you may want to fall back from them because we're living in a season right now where people do not care. The fact that there are 50 people in a room and somebody had no qualms pulling out a gun. And let's not forget, two other people were shot too. You know, unfortunately, Takeoff died, but there were two others shot. So this person had no problem shooting recklessly. A whole shootout broke out for something as simple as a bad joke and a possible dice game. So it's sad that we devalue life and that we do not appreciate the life that God has given us. So on that note, you guys, thank you so much for taking time out to watch this video. Y'all, please stay safe, stay prayed up, pray when you leave your home, and pray when you make it back safe. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good evening. Bye. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.